Who would think that Buddha and Jesus would be taking a gap year in downtown Tokyo? I'm Nicole Romanier. I'm the IFAC Honda Curator of Japanese Arts. Welcome to my corner. Japanese manga is a very specific way of storytelling. And what's so compelling about it is that it really draws you in. And these stories are everyday stories. They're historical stories, they're fictional stories, they're ghost stories. They're stories that are really from Japan or Japan's interaction with other countries. And this really is a potent form that we think fits very well with the British Museum's collecting practice. The British Museum is not so much about the object itself, it's about the hand that made that object. It's about what those objects tell us about the culture. It's about what we can communicate through these objects. What are people, when they're looking at this, what do they see, what do they read, and what does it tell us? And manga is a particularly powerful form because it is so visually graphic. Neil McGregor, the former director of the British Museum, said, um, I would like a manga of the British Museum. It was amazing that he thought of that. and I went obviously to Hoshino Yukinobu. His drawing is exquisite. He, he just makes history come alive. He um, makes these stories that are just so compelling that you have to read them. And we thought he would be perfect. It took us a year <laughs> to, to get through, but we finally did. And in 2009, after a visit to Sapporo to his studio to tell him about the British Museum, we managed to entice him for the first time to England. These are two drawings that Hoshino Sensei made for us at the British Museum and are in our collections now. He created these on the second trip to the British Museum to do further research. This is a typical gag manga. This is Professor Munakata looking at the Rosetta Stone, but the writing is gone and he's actually turned into the Rosetta Stone. But if you look at this one, I think this one is particularly important. Here we have Professor Munakata pointing out across the ocean. We're thinking of him perhaps in Japan pointing out towards us, or maybe he's in British Museum pointing out towards Japan. We have our Japanese, um, part of our Japanese armor right here that's in the collection. The Sutton helmet is looming large and something has shifted. If we look very carefully, we see Britain, we see Europe, and what he's saying is through the objects in the British Museum, you see the world. What's different about the British Museum to other museums is you can look at these kind of treasures from and, and really important objects from all different parts of the world and you find out about yourself. It's not about, you can find out about them, but it's more about a kind of an internal exploration. So through the objects, we see what we are, we see what other people are, and we come out somehow changed. This may be a bit of a surprise, but I think you'll enjoy it. Nakamura Hikaru is a young female artist who's incredibly talented. She, her series Arakawa Under the Bridge talked about a homeless group of people um, that was living under a bridge in Tokyo. Her other very, very hot series, which also started in a different magazine called Morning Tsu, this one is published by um, Kodansha, chronicles Buddha and Jesus taking a gap year in downtown Tokyo. They're living in a very small flat right here, and here they're having dinner together. And they always wear fantastic t-shirts, slogan t-shirts, and go through very many different types of adventures and issues together. So this series has been quite compelling. You can see Jesus and Buddha creating manga together. Actually, it's Buddha who is really interested in becoming a manga artist. They have all sorts of different adventures, um, going to different places. But what I really wanted to explain is how manga can take topics that are taboo, topics that are emotional, topics that are very close to one's heart that you normally can't speak about, and yet they can, through their magic of the line and through the storylines and also the visual power, can really shift your ideas about things. Who would think that Buddha and Jesus would be taking a gap year in downtown Tokyo? Who would think that they were having these adventures? Who would think that they would have a debate if they see a cockroach in their bedding 
whether it should be killed or not. These topics actually can seem ridiculous or spurious, but they're actually quite deep and, and they're quite doctrinal. Nakamura Sensei works with scholars and, and does a lot of research, and so her, her work is quite sensitive. It's not, um, it's not provocative in a, in a bad way. What it's trying to do is, is make us look and rethink about things. Manga is often about disasters. There are many mangas about um, the Fukushima disaster, 311, but also about Hiroshima. Many of you may know Barefoot Gen. Some of these mangas are incredibly sad. Some of them are really painful. But what's more important is that they're cathartic. Through them, we can release our fears. Through them, we can rethink our ideas. Through them, we have a space to, to find our own beliefs and our own imagination. I believe all of you can find your own manga. There is a manga for everyone. And what's so exciting about what we're doing at the British Museum is we're trying to bring this to you and, and show you that there is a choice and show you the role that, these, that manga plays, not just in Japan, but worldwide and now growingly on the web. Thank you very much for joining me on our manga adventure today. There are many more curators that are doing many different types of adventures through the British Museum YouTube channel. I hope you'll all subscribe. But first of all, I want you to tell us what you would like to see. What is your favorite manga and what manga you would like to see the British Museum collect? Please write it in on the comments section and subscribe to the YouTube channel of the British Museum. Thanks.